Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is DSP week number six, Friday, 18th of February, 2022. I'll begin to do some uh, exam questions now. Uh, in this exam question, I'm going to take from April, May. Okay, wait a minute. 2018. And this is the typical questions for Q2. So this is the question two. And it is regarding discrete time Fourier series, Fourier transform, and DFT. Okay, so this is a type of question you are going to expect for the quiz as well as for the exams uh, for the second questions for my part. Okay, so in if you go and look at the questions, uh, the first question is uh, explain circular convolution. and discuss this issue and how to use DFT to realize linear convolution. Okay, so once in a while, the there'll be these kind of questions and these kind of questions are like theory questions. So in this case, all you need to do is, you know, honestly refer to the notes uh, for this answer. So I'm not going to discuss these kind of questions uh, in this. So you just refer to the notes and, and uh, you read the answers. So there, once in a few years, some kind of questions like this will come up. Right, to be. So this is a seven marks question. And in 2B, uh, we have another type of question, which is like, now this is a calculation kind of question. So I've given you a sequence and the sequence looks like this. So you already see the pattern. The pattern is two, one, zero, zero is repeating, okay? And then he says that x0 equals to 2. So you should put an arrow here. So n equals to 0 is here. So it is a repeating sequence. And, and then the question asks us to find. So guess, right? You can find what? Of course, this is discrete time because our sequence, this is a n is discrete time. So so I can, of course, because this is a repeating sequence, I can ask you to find Fourier series or Fourier transform. In this question 2B of the exam, uh, I ask you to find the DTFS coefficients. Okay. And then that's the first part. And then after that, the second part is I ask you to sketch. Sketch. So if I ask you to find the DTF, I, I, then the second part of the question is I sketch the DTFT. So you realize that uh, you're not off the hook. Huh? You have to calculate the DTFS and sketch the DTFD. Okay. So the sketch the DFD magnitude and phase spectrum. All right. So, so you realize that actually when I give you an, uh, a sequence like this, it's actually very, very simple. You know, there's only four numbers. So N is equal to four. So it's period four. And in fact, I give you two zeros. So there's nothing to compute, right, for the zero. So the whole computation is only two and one in the two coefficients. But never mind, let us go and find what is the equation for the DTFS. Okay, so let's begin. Let me okay. So the DTFS equation first is CK, then K is equals to zero to N minus one. What is N? N equals to the period of XN. So this is the important point. Every time you are finding the, the DTFS, you must know what is the big N. Okay, otherwise you can't do a thing. So we know n is equal to 4. All right, second thing is that we remember to write the equation. So I've given you one page cheat sheet. So you, you should 
use the cheat sheet to write all these important equations down, all the DTFS, DTFT, DFT equations. Okay, n equals to zero, and again, the n minus one comes here. Okay, so n equals to zero to capital N minus one, x of n, because we are only looking at one period, and then we are multiplying by e minus j, and then you will realize the, in, the important guy again, two pi divided by n, see? So the n is always coming out. So without that big n, you can't do a thing. Okay, and then the k is here again, and n is here. So we, we call this uh, equation, this, this value here, omega naught, two pi over n, the fundamental frequency, fundamental angular frequency for the analysis, right? It's, remember that uh, when you are playing with uh, radians per sample, it says that I need n samples to complete one circle, two pi. All right, that's what it's telling you. Okay, so let's let's uh, brute force to do this. So let's calculate C. And then I'm going to write the notations for you. So K equals to zero here, okay? And then I'll change color so that you can follow the whole pattern. One over N. Now I'm going to open up the summation bracket, okay, now. So of course the first one is x of zero times e minus j. Then of course I'm going to now use this as omega naught, okay? And then I'm going to show you what a k is now. So this is a k, okay? So if I really want to do, I write k because it's zero here. And of course this, uh, I should write, this is the little n equals to zero. And so here I should write n little equals to zero. Okay. All right. So what do you remember what x zero is? X zero is two. Okay. And then of course, if you if you follow the whole equations, really you we are just putting all the values. So the rest I I won't be so thorough. I'll just write everything in the same color. So here is a k is equals to zero and n equals to uh, one, right? Okay. Then plus x2, e minus j, omega naught k, k equals zero, n equals to two plus x3, e minus j, omega naught, k equals to zero, n equals to three. Okay. So, so of course then, what is n? Big n, big n is four. What is the first x naught? This two. What is this guy? This guy is e minus j to the power of zero. E minus j to the power of zero is of course, guys, what is e minus j to the power of zero? One. Correct, so it's one. And then the second guy is uh, one times, again one plus zero times, one plus zero times one, and the answer is, so if you know how to do two and three, right? So it goes to three, four, that's the first answer. Okay, so now let's do the second one. K equals to one, one over N, and then we are going to now write two to the power of E minus J, then omega naught, K equals to one now, and n equals to zero plus two e minus j omega not k equals to one, n equals to one. Oops, I made a mistake. This guy is one, right? And then, then you realize that, hey, the e equation simplify because x2 and x3 are zero. So I, I don't even want to bother now, right? So you can see that actually the question is very simple. So the only problem is to solve this guy and this guy, these two guys, okay? So it's one over four. Then, then you have to, of course, know how to do the complex notation to the complex number. So this is, what is omega naught? Omega naught is, uh, what is my omega naught? Two pi over four pi over 
So this is 2e minus j, 2 pi over 4 times 1, plus 1e minus j, 2 pi over 4. Okay, 1 quarter. Let's get this right. Pi over 2. E minus j pi over 2 is E minus j pi over 2 is They make mistake guys Yeah, make mistake again Let me erase this Anyway, I'm going to skip some steps and Then I'm going to say that this guy is 1 quarter 2 plus 1e minus j pi over 2, okay? And then, of course, this guy becomes half plus 1 quarter e minus j pi over 2. And then you convert it into the polar notation, which is 0 0.56 angle minus 0 0.46, or you write it as 0 0.56e minus j is 0 0.46. So all the same, this, 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 all the same answer. Okay, so you have C1. So, so if you do the math, C0, C1, C2, then you can get all the numbers. So I'll just copy the numbers first for you. C2 is equals to one quarter angle zero. And C3, you realize that C3 and C1 are related. C3 is actually uh, equals to c minus 1 is equals to the c1 conjugate or i should write like this what the c1 conjugate means is equals to so we get the value of c1 is half oops make a mistake again minus equals to half plus one quarter. Okay, e minus j pi over two. Now this guy is half minus one quarter j. Okay, well, I better write. Okay, so guys, don't don't confuse yourself. So I'll I'll rewrite the answers for you. So you have to to check by yourself first. So this is three quarter. This is half minus one quarter j. This is one quarter angle zero, and here is half plus one quarter j. The interesting thing is that c three and C1 are complex conjugate of each other. That means the complex numbers are inverted. Okay, so this is the DTFS solution. And if you do that, you get five marks, or oh, three, four marks. And then after that, we want to, from here, we want to sketch the DTFT representation. Remember that we can get the Fourier transform from the Fourier series simply by saying x of e j omega is equals to, and then there's a there's this uh, there's this formula here that says all you need to do is to simply copy from from the c k and multiplying it by two pi, and you put the, what do you call that, a, a delta there. Okay, the delta is sitting at 2 pi of n k. So, so you realize something. In the DTFS representation, you are drawing something like this. You are drawing k. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. And this is ck for magnitude. 
and you are drawing K. This is angle of CK. 0, 1, 2, 3. So you put the numbers there. Now I will show you the numbers. So at C0, it is 3 quarter. So the magnitude is 3 quarter. So we go and say this is 3 quarter. 3 quarter. Okay. And then C1 is this guy. So of course, this is a rectangle number, which we don't like. So we always convert it into the polar notation, which is uh, if you convert half minus one quarter J, which is actually 0 0.56. Angle is uh, minus 0 0.46. So what you do is we're interested in the magnitude, which is 0 0.56. So 0 0.5 is about here. The other guy is one quarter, which is 0 0.25. So this guy is 0 0.56. This guy is 0 0.25. This guy again is 0 0.56. But here, because this is complex conjugate of each other, one of them is negative and one of them is positive, 0 0.46 here. So the magnitude is 0 0.56. Again, I always tell you that the the, this guy and this guy are complex conjugate of each other. So what do you think C4 is? Can you all tell me what do you think C4 is? Since it's periodic over four sample, you realize that C0 and C4 values are the same. Okay, C1 value is, and C5 are the same. C minus one value is the same as C3. So you can see all this symmetry and repeating all the time. All right, we can plot the magnitude. Of course, we can then plot the angle. So let's plot the angle now. The angle, the first one, C0 has angle 0. So we have this one. Okay, what about C1? C1 has angle minus 0 0.46. Minus 0 0.46. Minus 0 0.46. C2 has angle 0. And C3 has angle plus 0 0.46. So you realize that complex conjugate means that the angle is opposite sign, right? That's it. One of them is minus one quarter j, the other one is plus one quarter j. This one will generate the difference in sign, the sign of the angle. All right, so this is the DTFS representation. The interesting thing is that the k is from zero to n minus one. Then you say, where is, where is? And why is angular frequency? Of course, it is actually k multiplied by omega naught. Okay, and why is omega naught? Omega naught is two pi over n. Then you will realize that when when small n, sorry, when small k equals to four, four times two pi divided by four is actually two pi. So this it goes from zero to two pi. And what is two pi? Two pi is one whole circle actually back to zero again. So that is the reason why there's a symmetry like this. Okay, so please go through this carefully. So we have sketched the DTFS. In the exam questions, we'll ask you to sketch the DTFT. Now DTFT and DTFS actually uh, have the, have a very similar, the only thing difference is this, see? CKs are already computed for you. The only difference is we must pre-multiply by two pi for all the CKs. And they are not sitting at K anymore. They're sitting at some omegas, yeah? At this frequency. Oh, okay. So you again see it's always two pi over N times K. All right. In fact, right, once you have drawn this guy, we can draw the, I'll draw the magnitude for you only, okay? So let's try. So again, it's zero, this is omega. So now I will draw this as magnitude of x, e, j, omega. And then I'm going to draw this zero, one, two, three, okay? But now I'm not going to draw for you zero, one, two, three, because this is omega. So omega is actually, if I want to read two pi over four, right? Two pi over four times one case one. This guy is 2 pi over 4 times 2. This guy is 
2 pi over 4 times 3. This guy is the 2 pi over 4 times 4. If this is k equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's compute this. 2 pi over 4 is pi over 2. This guy is pi. This guy is 1.5 pi. This guy is 2 pi. So this is the horizontal axis with respect to omega. Okay, so now we understand, right? Actually, the figure here, this line, the horizontal line, is talking about omega going from 0 to 2 pi divided into n different parts, right? n equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Right, so get, get this figure up. Okay, now, oh, so what are we going to do? Actually, I can take this figure and copy down here by multiplying by 2 pi. And then, is it 2 pi times ck? I already got the ck. So all I need to do is 2 pi. And I'm only interested in the frequency at this, right? Because only here exists, nothing else in between. So let's draw now. Okay, once you have a delta, you must draw something like this, the arrow sticking out, okay? So this guy is nothing but 3, 4 times 2 pi. That's it. 3, 4 times 2 pi is how many? Is 1.5 pi. The second guy is 0 0.56 times 2 pi. I should draw, a, yeah, you must draw an arrow, okay? So it's 0 0.56 times 2 pi. So this is approximately... 1.12 pi. This guy is 0 0.25 times 2 pi is 0 0.5 pi. And this guy is, oops, it's always the arrow and 1.12 pi. See? So this is the DTFT magnitude response. Okay? And of course, I have to draw the face as well. So if I draw the face, The first one is zero. The second one is here, zero, and here. Okay. Now, please don't the 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 angle uh, is minus zero point four six. Please go and don't go and multiply by two pi. Okay. The angle don't change. So this is plus zero point two zero point four six, and this is omega, and this is the angle of of x e j omega okay so this is the answer for dtft and dtfs okay all right i'll pause now the questions all right just now the student asked me how to compute c k equals to one uh, so i would now repeat my steps in full so basically, we will get the equation 1 over n, summation of, here of course is n equals to 0 to big N minus 1 for this expression. And then now always remember what is the big N here. Big N is the period of the signal. Here's 4. So 2 pi over big N is 4. And then this is pi over 2. With omega naught, the fundamental frequency. Right. Interestingly, our, our value is very simple. So in fact, you realize that I will never need to compute x2 and x3 because it's multiplying by 0. So this expression simplifies to only computing for x0 and x1. So the only thing difficult is, is here, okay? The ex complex exponential. So you must be very careful. All right. So let's try again. So C1 equals to, then the right expression is E minus J omega naught times k times n. So this guy is k equals to 1. n equals to 0. So anytime times 0 is the whole expression goes to 0. So later on, you'll see that is x0 is 2, e minus j is 0. So e minus j is 0 is 1. So this is 2 times 1. So let's see the second guy now. Second guy is x1 times e minus j, pi over 2 times k equals to 1, n equals to 1 plus 0, 0 for these two guys. So this is e minus j pi over 2. What is e minus j pi over 2? So you draw your, your complex plane. Along here is the real line. This is 1, 
this is minus 1. Going above is J and going below is minus J. The angle clock or positive angle is anti-clockwise. The negative angle is clockwise. So E minus J pi over 2 is going from the horizontal axis real clockwise. So it's minus J. Okay, so 1 E minus J pi over 2 is this exactly this point here. Okay, so 1 means magnitude 1 with an angle of minus pi over 2. Okay, so this is minus J. Or this is, if you want to prefer in polar form, is minus J pi over 2. And if you prefer to be in polar form, is minus pi over 2. Okay, so these three forms represent, of course, you say what is minus J? It's 0 minus J, right? 0, the real number, minus J, the complex number. Anyway, you now can figure out what is e minus j pi over 2. So 1 e minus j pi over 2 is minus j. So, so if you forgot how to do this, you realize that for complex number addition, you have to convert everything to rectangle form to add. So you have this 2 minus j. 2 minus j divided by 4 is equals to half minus 1 quarter j. Now, remember we don't like this in rectangle form. We have to convert it into the polar form or the complex exponential form. So what do we do, right? So half and minus j, you can draw it in the rectangle form. This is the real line, and this is the imaginary line. The real line is half is here. Then uh, we have minus one quarter, so it goes below. So it's minus one quarter. So we are interested in this length, the magnitude, and this theta, the face, the angle. So it is nothing but trying to getting the Pythagoras theorem to go half square plus one quarter square square root to get the magnitude. And to get the phase is arc tangent of opposite over adjacent. And because it goes down, we are in introducing the minus sign here. Okay, so you realize that you will get the answer, which is 0 0.56. And this is minus 0 0.46. All right, so with that, and I think this is a quick revision of how to do the complex number. Okay, I pause now. All right, let's continue with the exam question. Uh, this is 2018. This is 2018 May, right? 2018 May. And question 2C. In the question 2C, we are asked the following. We are given a continuous time signal y of t and then we are given this cosine 500 pi t plus pi over 6 plus 8 exponential of j 2000 pi t minus pi over 3. This is sampled fs equals to 16k so we can produce yn so yn equals to ynt and therefore we substitute all t equals to ynt capital t is 1 over 16,000 because this is fs so now we put everything in the equation and we get 5000 pi t means sorry 500 pi times t t now has become nt become n 16000 plus pi over 6 the second guy is plus 8 exponential of j the 2000 still there pi still there t becomes n over 16000 minus pi over 3 what does this reduce to reduces to 10 cosine 500 pi over 1600 is how many? Can someone tell me? 500 divided by 16,000. Okay, I pause this. So 500 divided by 16k is not a nice fraction, but never mind. So it is 5 over 160 pi n plus pi over 6 plus 8 e j so this is a nice number is 2 over is 1 over 8 
1 over 8 pi n minus pi over 3. So first is we get y of n. The second thing is, uh, okay, you realize that this is a very, very big, uh, big FFT. We are going to ask you to perform DFT with 512 samples. So in the exams, if this ever happened, please don't, you know, go and write the equation for DFT and you'll think that you'll have to do X0, X1 until X511. <laughs> okay, please don't. The reason is this. You realize that my input signal is a cosine and a complex exponential. In the lecture notes, we'll show you that when your input signal is a cosine and exponential, it is very easy to find the Fourier representation. Let's pause. Right. So in go to O3A Fourier, you realize that if I have given you a, a cosine or a complex exponential, the Fourier representation is very, very simple. What happened is this. Uh, in the CTFT, this is CTFT because this is T, you realize that I am just going to draw the, the frequency axis and the magnitude is saying that only at this frequency, pi over 4, there's something there. There is pi over 4 and at minus pi over 4, there is something there. You realize that Fourier basically decompose your signal into complex exponential. Here, the diagram is telling you that there is these two complex exponential uh, that needs to be used to reconstruct a cosine pi over 4t plus pi over 6. You need the magnitude and you need the phase, which is plus pi over 6. So you have plus pi over 6 here and minus pi over 6 here. Okay, so you realize that when in this exam question, because we are asking you to perform uh, the DTFS, sorry, the DFT of this signal, cosine and complex exponential. All I'm asking you is, right, figure out where is the representation in the Fourier domain. So what you need to do is this is zero, this is 511. So this is actually breaking omega from zero to 511, actually, you will be thinking that it will be 0 divided by n times pi, times 2 pi, sorry. Okay, so we are dividing 0 to 2 pi into all these little parts here. And then I can plot the magnitude, and then I can plot the 0 to 511, the angle. So the question, of course, is where is this where is this signal in this axis? Okay, so this is 511. And now I will tell you the answer, but you guys have to go and figure out by yourself. You realize that you'll be in the number, number eight and number 32. And number, so I should erase this now. Five, zero, four. So this number here will be five times five, one, two. Later on, I will tell you why the five here. This will be 8 times the 512. And this guy would have a number 5 times 512. All right. So let's figure out that uh, we have a 10 here representing the cosine. You realize that when we use the complex exponential, it will be broken down into two complex exponential with half the weight. So it will be 5 at one side and 5 at the other side. So it's really, this is the 5 at this frequency and 5 again at this frequency. 
Okay, so this is the two frequency that will be used to construct the cosine. What about the eight? The eight has only one, has only one complex exponential. A cosine is made out of two complex exponential. A complex exponential is only made out of itself. So there's eight. So eight remains. Then why is that multiplied by five one two here? It is because we are using endpoint uh, F DFT, which you know do not divide by n. So the five one two is still there. Okay, let me show you the equation for the FFT so that uh, you know. So if you look at these questions in the DFT, the DFT computation is just simply here. And you realize that there is no one over n, okay, as compared to the one over n here. In fact, this equation and this equation are identical, except this one over n. So why one over n? One when you divide by one over n, you would get the the real energy of sorry the real constant of the of the equation. All right, let's see now. So. So in this question, all we are asking you to do is to interpret what is the x-axis. So let us figure out why I have it. Why is this it? Okay. Where, why, why is it it? So it is eight times two pi over n. Where is n? Five one two. Five one two points. So where is this guy? So it is. I'm going to use my math lab as a calculator. So remember that I'm trying to get this frequency, right? So 8 times 2 times pi. Uh, okay, let's ignore the pi. The other pi, 512 is 0.0313. Who is 0 0.0313? It's actually 5 divided by 160. So you realize that the eight, the eight element from k equals to zero, k equals to one, two, k equals to zero is a zero radian per sample. K equals to five, one, two, and here, at five, one, two, it is actually at two pi. So we are actually dividing zero to two pi by all these little points. Who is the eight point? I'm telling you that the eight point is here, five over 160 pi. Okay, now let's try one eight pi. Where is 1, 8 pi in? Why is it in element 32? Who is element 32? Remember, element 32 is 32 times 2 pi divided by 5, 1, 2. So if I bring the pi out, it equals to 64 divided by 5, 1, 2 times a pi. Okay? Who is 64 divided by 5, 1, 2? 64 divided by 5, 1, 2 is... 0 0.125. Who is 0 0.125? 1 over 8. See? 1 over 8 radian per second. 1 over 8 pi radian per second. So let me try to explain this again. This horizontal axis, although has a number 0, 1, 2, until 5, 1, 2, what is his interpretation? His real interpretation is actually, it is some frequency. Is The frequency is actually this number k times what you call that omega naught. That's it. Okay, so, so this whole exercise, the second part of the exercise is nothing but recognizing that I have a first I have a complex exponential, I have a cosine wave which is made up of two complex exponential, right? Two complex exponential. So now I need to find where is the frequency and the magnitude and the phase. And then therefore now I can plot this guy and this guy, magnitude, and then later on the face. Clear? So this, this question is a question of understanding that, that actually Fourier representation or DFT or DTFT, the x-axis is nothing but uh, the frequency. And we have to map the frequency to the real digital frequency uh, here. Okay, I pause now and take questions. This this symbol, right? This symbol is it? Yeah. Okay. If I say A, 
I want to take the magnitude of A, magnitude of A, the sign is this, magnitude of A. So the symbol is this. Well, this is the variable. Can you see? Then if we want to say the angle of A, right? We'll write angle A. Can you see? Oh, okay. I, I think uh, yeah. we can write uh, like properly. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. The magnitude. This is not 1.1. Okay. It's the magnitude of A or the magnitude of the Actually, it should be magnitude of the CK, right? Hmm. Or not even CK. This is the DFT. So it's the magnitude of the XK, I think. Yeah. Okay, can. All right. So I think uh, in this one hour, I have answered uh, part 2B and 2C of the exam questions. So in the exams and in the quiz, you are expected to do all this. Okay, so you have to understand that complex exponential representation uh, and computation. In fact, I think in the tutorial, in the tutorial, the tutorial 2B, yeah, so you can try a question 2B where I give you a very detailed rundown on this, okay? How to calculate the DTFS as well. Okay, and then you can use Yao Kang's answer as well. Yao Kang was a previous TA who did uh, all the slides annotations. I think it's very, very detailed, so you should be able to do it and follow. Okay, with that, I pause now and take questions. <laughs>